So if you're looking for a place to rent in Mexico, and specifically here, this video will be about La Paz, Mexico, you can go and find an agent online who will help you find things. And actually I've got a video in one of these corners about working with Annabelle and she is great, but she's a property manager and the properties tend to be a little bit more expensive. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the people who did the footwork themselves to find the better deals in La Paz. I'm about to meet with Scott and he's gonna show us this place here that he has rented. And we're gonna go through and, and learn things, you know, like what does it cost and how did they find it? Cause that's, that's kind of the big thing. Now, one thing to note is we're talking about prices. This is 2023, early 2023 that I'm recording this. And some of these people that we're gonna be talking to today might've signed their lease a year or two ago. So some of the prices have gone up and depending on when you're watching this, they might've gone up a little more. So uh, don't necessarily expect the best deal. However, prices have gone up in the United States too. So it is always a better deal in Mexico, especially when you start comparing places. So I did another video where people were appalled at how expensive something was. It was a $3,000 a month, $3,000 US dollar a month, full house overlooking the ocean, not too far from the beach. And you have to think about like a similar place in the United States would probably be something like in Malibu or San Diego. So we're not comparing to a place what it would cost in Kansas or Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You have to look at really what you're getting down in Mexico. And then plus once you get here, everything else is less expensive too. But let's go ahead and meet Scott. Hey, Brighton. Hey, how's it going? Oh, there's my neighbor. Wonderful. Hola. Hi, Lisa. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> there we go. That's Diego. 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 <laughs> he wants oh to say hi to Scott. Perfect. So, do you mind showing us your apartment? No, While not at all. It's a, see Scott's? it's a little bit of a mess, but. Okay. You, were, you had no warning. I didn't know you were coming. No, I love my apartment. Ground floor. <laughs> and uh, it's two bedrooms. Sweet. And uh, I've been here for almost two years, so I we love it here. It's got two bedrooms, um, one with twin beds. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it comes furnished? Yes. Oh, fully furnished. Yeah. Fully furnished. Perfect for people like me who just arrived with you know nothing, flew in, didn't drive, didn't bring a truck, bathroom. bathroom. And um, and then master bedroom. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Here's the light. Oh. Yeah. There we go. There's the light. Simple. Yeah. 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 Nice cool. big window in the bedroom, and then the kitchen I love because it's really nice and big. The only thing it doesn't have is a is a oven. Oh yeah. 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 It's very common. Yeah. It seems oven's not right. But I have a little toaster oven, so really I can use that. And then this is great out here, that what they call a service patio. Um, can wash your shoes out here, and there's a washing machine, and then we have a dryer that's upstairs, communal dryer. So, uh-huh, we can hang our stuff. Yeah, got three mini splits. It's a six-month lease, and I pay 13,000 pesos a month, which... If the dollar were stronger, uh, it would be um, six, about six fifty a month. So right now it's maybe six seventy five a month. And then like that, you ask. No, no, I really no. That includes everything. It's I really like it here. There's a little bit of noise. I mean, it is communal living. That I wasn't used to, but no, nowhere is perfect. Yeah. And if when I think if I ever think about moving, I think, you know, I've got the rooftop here, which I we go up to the rooftop every day. It's fantastic with a great view of all around La Paz and friends here. Easy to make friends here in the apartment and in La Paz. So um, awesome. Cool. Well, we'll let you go on your okay. dog walk. OK. And Scott will tell us more about uh, the whole complex. In the place. OK. And we'll talk to him. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Heading up. This is the rooftop palapa. This is what they show you first when you come here to rent an apartment. <laughs> okay, I'm excited now. So it's like two apartments on each level-ish? Yep. Two there. Two there. Okay, and then we There's, got a couple uh, over here. Two over here. These have little balconies facing the street. Uh-huh. Um, 
And then, so, oh, that's still part of their place. Oh, is that that's the laundry? That's like a laundry room. Okay. Cool. And then they have their own, that's, another pull, uh, that's space another up one. there. Cool. Let's go up. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So. Let's see why this is the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the selling point. It is, oh, except wow. for the stairs. Yep. So. Very nice. This is, I think, at a, at one time it was a little more. A little nicer up here because that was a hot tub, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interesting. And then the view. The view is awesome, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. You can see the Bay of La Paz. You can see the mountains behind. Looks like you've got a little grill here. And a grill you and can use. And a bunch use. of spots to sit and hang out in the shade. Nice palapa structure. So, good Good morning coffee spot. I think Lisa comes up here and reads and uh, and tans or whatever. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. There's a cathedral. Yeah, and so we're like five blocks from the Malacone, maybe? Not uh, far. About that, not yeah, far. Not far at all. Just a quick uh, a few minute walk, probably. And you're you know, down on the water, and yep. you're pretty much in the middle of everything right now. So that's the whole charm about this location is centrally located, and there's the, one of the best uh, fish taco places right next door, Estadio Tacos, Estadio 2. I think I have some um, video from that. I haven't turned it into a video yet, but it's on my list of great taco places. Yep. <laughs> cool. So, let's go back down. All right. Let's try this again. <laughs> let's do this again. Okay. This is, uh, you step down a little bit into the apartment, nice. and you have this uh, entryway with a pull-out couch if you have a guest. Uh-huh. Um, the bathroom is, so it has a separate bathroom, a shower. Mm-hmm. Nice. And all the floors are tile, of course. Um, so this apartment is uh, one bedroom mm -hmm. and a uh, separate kitchen. Cool. It's a lot for the money. Yeah, so what do you, what do you pay? I'll pay 9,000 pesos. It's 450, month. 500. <laughs> yeah, now, right now, it's about 500 because of the value of the peso is up. But it includes electric, cable, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, nice refrigerator. Yeah. Uh, it's not a tiny one. Yep. Um, let's see. And a cool place here. Fans. Fans. Do you have AC or? <clears throat> yeah, there's a mini split right there. Okay. Cool. In oh, bedroom. Yeah, I see it. I have an oven. Which, oh. I, which I don't use. So yeah, they're not very... Microwave stove. This is a propane stove, as they all are, I think, down here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a not a bad little place. So I was looking in New Jersey, what a, what $475 a month would get me uh, a room in a, a horrible place, just a room in somebody's house with a shared bathroom. So, I mean, comparable... Yeah, and and you're not, uh, you know, gorgeous weather, and you know, five blocks from the beach. Yeah, um, everything, and and the middle of everything. So, yeah, this is a great example, I think, of of uh, um, you know, I don't know if I mean, okay, so let's talk about who who lives here in terms of the the complex. So there's a dozen or so. Yeah, there are people and, from. Uh, there are some native people, but not very many. Uh, Lisa was saying that there's um, one friend from uh, Argentina and another one from where I forgot what she said. Sorry. Yeah. I can't remember what she uh, said either. <laughs> anyway, it's a fairly international community. I'm from the U S uh, my neighbor Lisa is from the U S I haven't seen any Canadians here, but I know that there are Canadians that have, have been in and out of here. So this is great. I want Scott to tell us kind of the story of how he found the place because that's part of this video is finding the places that are in the $450, $500, $600 range. You, you don't have an agent uh, that kind of does it all for you. You kind of do you need to do some footwork. At least that's what I'm expecting Scott to say. So let's hear <laughs> about the footwork he had to do to get this place. So when I came here, I didn't know anybody. I had only seen a couple of Brighton's videos about how to get from the airport to La Paz. So uh, my first uh, move was to get on the Eco Baja Tours bus and ride here, but I didn't know anybody. And I ended up meeting a couple people on the bus and they said, uh, one guy offered to, he said, I have a car, I'm from San Diego, I live here and there. 
and he offered to take me to uh, drop me off at a hotel because I didn't know any place. I wanted to stay close to the Malacan, so he took me to drop me off at a place called the Pension California Hotel. So uh, that was where I started my search for an apartment, and I kept giving them every day. I would say, I'm staying another day, another day. I walked 50 miles, literally, looking for signs and windows and stuff, and it was kind of not fruitful on two reasons, because I had set my budget very low, like 5,000 pesos a month. I thought I was going to get a two-bedroom apartment, and I had all this uh, fantasy of what I was going to get for my money. But uh, after two weeks of walking around, I was getting pretty frustrated. And a uh, guy that washes cars, that's a local street guy, uh, he said, hey, I know a place. How's your, he said, how's your search going? I, he goes, I know a place. So we walked up here. And uh, he introduced me to the owner here, and, and uh, they showed it to me, and that was it. So it's about double the budget that I was hoping to be, but it's still cheap. I mean, mm -hmm. less than 500 bucks for a one-bedroom apartment, as we all said mm -hmm. already. So yeah, so I think we're going to hear throughout this video how people found their place. And I think I hear from people about walking around looking for those signs and windows. I want to hear if Scott speaks Spanish and if that was a barrier or not. But also it is just kind of like the people you meet. You never know who you're going to meet. I know also one of the things people talk about is using the Facebook groups. So let's hear from Scott if he tried any of, of that stuff and about his Spanish. I brought my little portable uh, computer monitor that I bought. I also brought my Mac Mini, so I had a full operating computer system that I could use in my in my room in the hotel. And so I was joining all the local La Paz expats, expats, you know, all the expat pages, and asking people. And I actually had a local girl. She goes by the name of Dam Coco, Dam Chi Coco. <laughs> She's from La Paz, and she offered to take me around and show me all the neighborhoods. So she picked me up one morning and drove me around because when you're here, if you're just walking, you can't get a real feel for everything. So you need to get somehow to get out and check out the different neighborhoods. So she drove me around and, and helped me a lot. But I did join a bunch of local, local expat pages and that helped out too. There are some rental pages where people will post. You can even post what your budget is, although they don't like to see that very much. Uh, but uh, that is the strangest thing is like people don't want to post the cost for a place, nor do they want you to post what your budget is. Yeah, it's a little bit of a game. I actually, the, this place, it was online for 8,500 pesos. But then when the owner called his son to show me the place, he goes, I have an American looking <laughs> to rent an apartment. So that was, I think, the red flag to... Uh, bump the price because I'm paying 9000 They said, oh, that doesn't include all the free stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> 500 So now I'm paying 500 pesos for all my free stuff a month extra. <laughs> so, so what about Spanish? Do you speak Spanish? Hablo poquito espanol solamente. I have about three years of high school Spanish from decades ago that I had to rely on. And I've learned a couple things here, but I get by mostly because we're in La Paz and there are a lot of visitors, a lot of the, the workers speak some English. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but... But with, with, it, with regards to like finding a place, did you find that a barrier when you're making these phone calls? Yes. To... Well, when, the, uh, when the, uh, this girl, Dam, helped me out, she would make the phone call. I would get the number off the place and she would call. And because people who are fluent speak rapidly... I could never make a phone call and ask about, I mean, I could, but it's probably better to WhatsApp text them uh -huh. because then you can translate it on Google Translate and uh, go back and forth that way. Yeah. And one of the things I get frustrated with it, with that is they will sometimes do a recording on WhatsApp and I'm like, come on, we're on WhatsApp, type it in. <laughs> so Yeah, I walked around. The, the walking around part sounds good in theory. It was good for me. I lost, I lost weight, but... I did, ultimately didn't use that to find this place. It was uh, through a, a local guy that, that I had met while I was walking around. So I guess mm -hmm. in a roundabout it, it way. It worked, yeah. We're specifically talking about La Paz today, and, and it's, you know, it might be different in other parts of Mexico because I've heard that in some places it's a lot more 
maybe serious of a process in terms of having someone vouch for you that's local and you know signing all this paperwork and whatnot. So I want to hear about what Scott's experience was here uh, specifically in La Paz and how long his lease is for. This is the lease. It's all in Spanish, but I used my uh, uh, Google Translate. Take Google picture. Translate. Take you know, open it up. Take look at the translation. Hopefully, it's a standard lease. I gave him nine thousand pesos as a deposit. Uh, so I'm I'm having them use half of my uh, deposit for the half a month that I'm going to be here because okay. I have to leave because of my passport. Okay. So yeah, how long is your lease for? Six months. Six months. I tried to get a three month lease so I would could could keep looking for a better place for three months, but they didn't they didn't want to do that. You know, if you're not in a hurry, some places might bend a little bit. Yeah, and I guess you know they want to have the longest lease possible. And then they know you're, if you're signing your lease, you're going to stay. So, well, that's a good point too, because if you're only you're only allowed to be here for six months on a, tourist a passport visa. tourist visa, which isn't really a, it's just a yeah stamp yeah. a stamp in my uh, passport. But um, some of the best deals that I found, like for two bedroom houses and stuff like that, minimum one year lease. It came with a TV set, cable, Wi-Fi. It's got Netflix, it's got all the different cable channels. The only U.S. cable channel it has is Fox News and <laughs> not my, not not my your cup of tea. So you just plugged your computer in now. So I plugged, yeah, I brought my Mac mini computer with me. It's easy to carry around. So uh, I commandeered the uh, screen here to use it as my uh, editing and just general watching internet cool. webs pages and stuff. Lisa just came back in and she's going to share a couple more thoughts with us and something I forgot to ask her was how she found this place and that's going to be something you want to want to hear about. I had reserved a, a great apartment in Centro in advance and put a deposit on it but when I got here there were a couple things that hadn't been clarified between me and the owner. I was renting directly from an owner and so it fell through and then I was you know desperate to find another place because it was near the beginning of the season and there wasn't going to be much to look at. So I came I saw this place on Facebook Marketplace and ran right over and saw it in the apartment. It was really bigger than I needed. I only needed a one bedroom or a studio even, and this is two bedroom. Knowing the time constraints, I went ahead and took it immediately, which is pretty much what I felt like I needed to do. So, and that worked out great. I was you know, grateful to have even an apartment that was a little bigger than I needed. And Lisa's also worked out a great deal with the landlord about traveling back and forth, which is not common. I'm going to have her talk a little bit about that leasing something in advance, uh, because a lot of people, we see it in the Facebook groups, they're like, oh, I'm going to be moving to La Paz in a year I'm looking for an apartment. So I want to have her talk about that concept. Because the rental market is so tight here right now, La Paz has you know, gotten very popular all of a sudden. There's not a lot of availability. And there wasn't three, th four years ago when I first started coming here. So I realized that if I wanted to rent something in advance, I really needed to go through Airbnb because then you can lock in the dates that you want. Because the market right now is such that if you find something, you need to take it right away because an owner cannot hold something, say, three months next spring for you because someone else might come along and want to rent it for six months or a year and then it would not be available. And if you were to put a deposit down on something for next spring, there's a good chance you might not get your deposit back. So that can be a difficult situation to navigate. So when you find something, you want to take it. Mm -hmm. So it also points out how important it is to be here. But also in terms of not being here, it sounds like you've worked out a deal with your landlord. Yeah, well... It's not a sure thing. There's, it, there's no guarantees here. But when I leave to go back to the U.S. for a couple months in the summertime, avoiding the hottest months here of August and September, if he's able to rent my apartment for just a couple of months while I'm gone, then I was able to move back in when I returned in October, November into the same apartment, which was really great. And so I'm hoping that'll work out again this year. 
So we've removed probably eight or nine blocks, a little further from the center of town over here to Robert and Mary Ann's place. They live behind this orange gate. It's kind of a nice little neighborhood here. We've got a ENT right next door and then a little bit of a, a restaurant next door to that. So it's a little bit further from the tourist area, but still walking distance from it. So this is great. This just shows you kind of like the small world of La Paz here. So as we were starting here, well, the neighbor popped out and said, Brighton, I recognize your voice. So we're going to get her to talk about how she ended up in the apartment next door to these guys. Hello, everyone. I am Dorothy. I'm so excited. I uh, heard Brighton uh, speaking moments ago. I was actually in the apartment where I'm house and pet sitting for someone. And she's actually a friend of a friend, someone I met while I was in Mexico City. And she recommended me. So I'm here for about two weeks helping out. And uh, my overall plan since I retired a year and a half ago from the state of California is to find a place to live. And I was Googling and watching videos and I saw Brighton's videos. And although he talks about being almost retired, I am fully retired. <laughs> Wonderful, congratulations. So thank you, thank you. And this is my first time in La Paz itself. So I'm just kind of exploring, walking around, riding the bike. So house sitting, pet sitting are great options. If you want to kind of check places out, I know there's some great websites that you can use to find places that need house sitters, kind of a matching service. Uh, but Dorothy said she met someone in Mexico City just on the street whose friend needed a house sitter here in La Paz. So let's kind of figure out where she's going next after this two weeks is up. During my time here house sitting, which is a great opportunity to check out this area. As I mentioned, I've never been to La Paz. I've been to Rosarito and Sonata, Tijuana many times. Um, so I'm ready to purchase. So I'm connected with the real estate agent and starting tomorrow, we're going to go around and see what kind of properties. I think I know kind of the style I want, but there's so many variations, you know, a condo style or a freestanding home with some land like Brighton has with his <laughs> wife. So that looks wonderful too. So that's uh, the next step. So I'm in no rush. I mean, I have a room that I'm renting in California, so there's no huge rush. So I'm even considering doing the, uh, what is it? The pre-sale oh, one. Yep. Yeah. Pre-sale condos. Yes. Yeah. Pre-sale condos. So that is my uh, status of my adventure. So it's nice. Robert and Marianne have a, uh more of a rental history here in different places. So they're going to be able to share not only the place they're living in right now, but also their experience with different places and how they got those different places. But let's start out with a tour of their place here. I'm Marianne, and this is my husband, Robert. Uh, this is our second year in La Paz. Uh, we're actually temporary residents this year and staying for the summer. Uh, we have a rental for a year with a year lease here. It's our second property with the same landlady. Uh, she has about 10 properties in La Paz that she rents out, mostly to expats. Cool. Yes. Well, let's, let's take a tour and then we'll talk more about how you found it. So we're here kind of like this is a three unit little apartment complex. Yeah, there's three zoom this out a little bit. This, and this is your patio. This is your private patio. We have a patio with a table and four chairs. And it came furnished? It came furnished and somewhat equipped. <laughs> uh, the barbecue is ours. Yep. <laughs> we have a little studio den, second bedroom area yep. off the main pat off the patio. Yep. Uh, we use it as TV and I use it as a workout space in the mornings. Nice. So, yes. It gets used, and then it's storage as well. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. So that's walk across now. On the other it's... side, we have the main area, and it's pretty pretty simple. Um, it's one big room that All includes right. a dining room, kitchen, living room space. Yep. And uh, it's... It came somewhat equipped. We set some of the stuff back because we had our own coffee maker and whatnot. So. Uh, so the landlord just said, kind of take, took it back and stored it, whatever yeah. you didn't want. Whatever. So you wouldn't have like any clutter. Yeah, less clutter, less stuff. Because when you try and... There's not a lot of storage in, in, in Mexican spaces, we, we were. So you've got to be very... Creative? <laughs> <laughs> yep. There is a little paddock pantry area off the side. Oh, lawn, okay. Yeah. So that does help somewhat. Yeah, but closets are not super popular. 
no, and no. cabinetry not either. So you can see kind of the kitchen is yeah. pretty simple. Uh, but you do have a stove and an oven. Yeah, that's, uh, we've been to places where it's just a cooktop. Yep. Uh, and that's kind of normal. We yep. actually had an electric range last year in hmm. places, which is very odd. Yeah, gas is the thing here, LP gas. Yes. So, cool. So, and a nice refrigerator, and yeah, now we... It's a little big. It's, it's yeah. Nice <laughs> and then in here is the main bedroom. Nice. Very nice. Um, cool. Okay. Cats. <laughs> Very nice. So that's a king-size king size bed, which is not super common. No. Free and, standing uh, closet space. Yep. But it... it works yep it's a good space and you have ac we have ac there. and then you have a, a bathroom off here including a, the litter box oh there's a kitty you know i love kitties hello hello oh and the dog's like no me dog 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 <laughs> <laughs> i love dogs too so and we, we oh and you have a very small little outdoor small here with, on, with a washing machine oh which is also kind of rare in rentals. Yeah, but you have a nice little private spot. Yeah. Um, cool. That explains the uh, red uh, line out front to hang the, 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 the Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's something here in La Paz. No one uses the dryer. Yeah. You, the sun will dry everything. Cool. Well, let's uh, maybe go out into your patio and chat about how it all happened. <laughs> Year one, 2019, I took her to my former home in San Diego for a Christmas vacation. When we got back, I said, hey, I could retire there. We looked at the cost of living and said, no, I can't. So she started a search for places that uh, would fit my criteria. Warm, affordable, Pacific Ocean water. And she did an extensive search over about six weeks and decided, okay, some of the places, uh, Chile, Peru, the South American, that was too far away. Panama was too American. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and uh, then we started, so she said, okay, Mexico it is. Well, where in Mexico? And we decided that Huatalco and Acapulco were too far south. Puerto Vallarta, way too touristy. So we had actually settled on Mazatlan and researched the living bejiminy out of Mazatlan. We could probably find our way around the place without ever having been there. Six weeks before we were scheduled to leave Canada, I was watching HGTV and they had a show called Mexico Life. And the one and only show that they had for La Paz was, was on. And when the show was over, I kind of spoke up and says, well, why don't we go to La Paz instead? It would save me having to purchase a temporary import permit for the vehicle. <laughs> Simple things. <laughs> exactly. So I know that exact episode of Mexican Mexico Life. And actually, one of the houses from that episode was a house that I toured. And that's with Tanya. And one of these corners is going to have a link to that if you want to check out Tanya's house. It was not the house that was selected by the people who were, were deciding where to live. But it was part of that TV show. But let's continue forward now that we've decided La Paz might be a good place. Maybe how to find the specific place in La Paz. Okay, we decided upon La Paz. Then we had to deal with how to get here because this was during the COVID lockdowns and the border closures uh, between Canada and the US. Just uh, to note, Mexico never closed its borders. So, we had figured out a plan to get us down here and then the border opened up and we threw out those plans and and drove down 4200 kilometers from edmonton alberta i'll pass it to her because i did long distance logistics <laughs> we had to decide where we were going to stay and how we were going to find a place to live in la paz we knew nobody and had never been here before so I just decided, well, we'll just use Airbnb. I picked a few places that I thought would be 
suitable for where for us. We have two dogs and a cat, so that makes things a little more interesting. So I narrowed it down to things that would fit in our budget, were pet friendly, and seemed like they would relatively be close to where we wanted to be without having ever been here before. I let Robert then have a look at what I had selected as possible possibilities and he said, well, how about this one? So that was, we registered to live there for a month and hope that it would be suitable and maybe stay even longer. Unfortunately, it was a little small. It was supposedly a one bedroom, but it was actually a studio uh, and a very small kitchen. And so it was, and it wasn't necessarily in the location that we were looking for. We wanted to be closer to the Malacon and a little more of the action than it, than it was. So we stayed there a month and then move forward, trying to find somewhere else. So I think that is, is key. A lot of people start out with Airbnb. Yes, it is a little more expensive, but it is important. Being here is when you'll find deals. So if you want to do everything from the US and you want it to be a you know, months out in advance, uh, it's gonna be Airbnb or a management company that is going to charge you more. If you wanna get into the local market with the lower prices that you kinda of have to be here, and Airbnb is a great way to start. And then also you have that one contact with your Airbnb host. They may have other rentals or things like that that could be a possibility for you too. But let's see where these guys ended up next. From the Airbnb, we took the time to use local websites to see property management companies and whatnot to try and find a place. We were in contact with a gentleman and we rented a place from him for about a month. We had were hoping to continue for a longer commitment, but it wasn't necessarily the best place due to roosters. roosters. <laughs> <laughs> but from that place with the dogs, I was walking to the Malacon every day. We I ran into a gentleman who owned a house about a half a block away and started talking to him and we saw his place. He had a two, two bedroom, two bathroom upstairs in his house that he was looking to rent and uh, we were lucky enough to look at it, love it and live there for a year well, or four, for four, four months. And a half months. <laughs> yeah, for four months we were there. Um, Everybody we that came and visited loved it and was like, how did you find this? And it was like, feet on the ground. When we left last year in May, because we were only here for six months, we unfortunately couldn't get it again because he's rented it long term to someone else. Who we know, by the way. <laughs> yes, people we know. I had to start a new search when we were in Canada this year. And that started by using Facebook Marketplace, things like local La Paz, expats, and rentals by owners La Paz, you know, Facebook, Facebook groups. groups. Yep. There are some websites but I've, that you can find rentals on, but I find that they don't keep them as up to date and you end up looking at something that's, oh, oh we rented it three months ago. We also were lucky enough last year to make a contact who was willing to go and look at places for us. So if we had found something, he would go and do a, a WhatsApp walkthrough video for us, um, which was very helpful. He did that for about three places. Through a posting on local La Paz, I was contacted by a lady who owns about 10 properties here in La Paz. And uh, so you posted saying, hey, we're looking for a place. Yeah. I'm looking for a place. I have animals. We'll be down the end of October. And hopefully we, you know, she con reached out and said, well, I have some places that'll be available. Maybe we can work something out. We actually spoke on phone calls. Uh, she met with our friend. He, uh, he went and looked at things for us. And we were lucky enough that we, we ended up with one of her properties. And when our lease was there was coming up, I started the search again. And then that's where you use your feet on the ground and do a lot of walking. It's hard this year because there's a lot of people down here and there's not so many rentals this year. So 
um, it wasn't as successful or fruitful to get your feet on the ground and, and walk as previously. But we were lucky enough that our landlady had some properties that were becoming available because people were going home. <laughs> So we just moved from one of her properties to another one. So we are recording this in April. I'm not sure when this will come out because I'm about to leave town. So I've been just like recording, 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 recording and not editing. So these will be coming out as I edit along the way. But there's this definite like kind of exodus of the part timers that happens in April. And it's a sad time for the part timers who are leaving and for the full timers who are losing friends for the summer. But um, that's what Marianne is talking about is that a lot of those people who were on short-term leases, those leases are coming up and landlords. If you want to move here, if you move here in like May, that's probably the best thing because you're able to sign a lease right when all the places start becoming available. And then you, if you can do it for a year and a year and a year. But uh, it was it's kind of nice that uh, she mentioned that she was able to do some of this online. But online having been here before having some contacts who can help out not just kind of online for the first time ever in la paz so it can be done remotely but it's it's a little harder and, and you kind of got to have those contacts first but let's continue and uh, talk about kind of a little bit more about utilities and where we are located uh some additional additional things uh, in terms of utilities, the only thing that we pay for external to our rent is the electric bill. And that's because it is uh, quite varied from one uh, tenant to the next. At the place we were at before moving here, our neighbor upstairs, because she had spent uh, way too many years in Hawaii, it was not accustomed to the 13 degree overnight temperatures here and was cold so she went out and bought two space heaters and when the bills came in i took both bills out of the mailbox and took hers upstairs to her and i of course being a snoop took a look and saw that her bill was three times higher than ours and that was only because of the amount of uh, electricity used by space heaters our rent includes uh, water and internet. So what, what is your electricity? What do you pay? At this location, we won't know until we get our first bill. Uh, the last bill we had at the previous uh, location was 465 pesos for two months. Yeah. So, so about 25 bucks less. Yeah. 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 yeah, US. Yeah. US, yes, we're Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so like $472 Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite that bad, but, but well, yeah. Like I said, the internet is provided by the landlord. And so let's talk about the internet. Is it good? Here? For the most part, yes. We've yeah. had a couple of mornings where Telcel has dropped out. My personal equipment is rock solid, but occasionally Telcel itself will drop out for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Beyond that, I, I have no complaints. We had 50 megabyte uh, service over at the other place. We've got 100 megabyte service here, but we've also got three units, and the yes. Telcel equipment is in the middle unit. Ah, yes, we we share it. So, but if the landlady has also said that if it's not sufficient, she says she would up the plan. Um, at our uh, expense. at a, at an expense. <laughs> so, but. Uh, well, no. you, you mentioned water, um, so that's not including drinking water, I assume. That's yeah. true. You have yeah. to pay your own drinking water, and that's one of the things you, when you're looking for a place, it's good to find out where you can get it from. There are several companies in town that will deliver it uh, to your door. The lady on the very end, uh, the water delivery guy, carries it to her unit for her. We go around the corner and a block and a half up to a local purification uh, business and uh, just fill our water there for 15 pesos per uh, 20 liter garrafon. Mm -hmm. But that's 40 pounds of water to carry back. So, 50. Yeah. 50 pounds. 50. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the, the city water uh, in the summer when it gets hot, they do have water shortages here. 
One of the things that uh, we learned is when you're looking for a place, ask about the water situation. This location, we have a 10,000 liter cistern underground and there are 1,500 liter tanks on top of each unit. So total for the three units, we have uh, 14,500 liters of water to carry us through. But when it's uh, summertime and it's really, really hot and the aquifer isn't as full as it might be, the city will, instead of delivering water every two days, will make it go a week in between or even, I've heard, two weeks between supplying to the homes. That's, that's something you have to be aware of is, you know, where can you get your drinking water? If this is the first time you are seeing a video about Mexico water, you know, drinking water, you can't drink the water uh, pretty much anywhere in Mexico. And so you buy it by the, the Garifone, but it can be less than a dollar for five gallon, big five gallon container, or you can pay more if you want it delivered. I've got a video about the water, how the water systems work in Mexico, but the gist of it is for the most part, the water comes from the city, but as Robert mentioned, not every day. And sometimes specific hours, sometimes specific days, they actually publish, I think via Facebook, kind of like, a, hey, if you're in this neighborhood, these are the days you can expect the water to be running. And everyone uses it to fill up either a tank on their roof or a tank underground. And, you know, it's, it fills up slowly, but you have this big supply or not, I think is the key here. Is like if you're at a place where they just have one Tanaco on the roof shared by a number of people, your neighbor could very quickly use up all the water if they're using a lot of water. So you are in a shared situation, but 10,000, 14,000 liters is a lot of water. It's a good point to figure out what, what the water situation is in the neighborhood. So, you know, sometimes there are certain areas where they get water less often than others, um, and also specifically for the building. Okay, so when we were uh, deciding upon moving to this location, we had looked at another uh, apartment and we had asked about the water situation in the summer. And the, the potential landlady had uh, basically stated that what she does is if her property runs out of water, and, and this particular landlady lived on the property. Uh, if they ran out of water, uh, she had a, a private water delivery uh, fill her cistern up so that her, she and her tenants always had water. Or, you know, they might be without water for a day. One of her tenants last summer had uh, mentioned that the businesses and homes across the street hadn't had water for two weeks. And, and then asked, why do we have? And the landlady says, have you not noticed the big green truck that comes along and uh, <laughs> every once in a while and fills it up? So there are options available. Conserving water in a desert area, because La Paz is in a desert, is very highly recommended. A previous landlord of ours ran us out of water every once in a while because he was watering his tree. And then, he, then we tell him we're out of water and he kind of be dumbfounded as to how that could possibly happen. <laughs> yeah, water is a big thing. I hope to do a video on water. Uh, I'm still working on getting a good contact there, but Pippas are the names of those trucks, you know, the big trucks that come around with water. So I'm glad that someone's paying attention here. Robert just <laughs> mentioned that I haven't asked them about what they pay for rent. So <laughs> kind of a big question. So let's, uh, let's get that answer. You gotta pay for where you're living. And at this location, we are paying 16,000 pesos a month. Our previous uh, location was 14000 a month, but we have more space here. We've got uh, faster internet. You know how they say in real estate, the top three most important things are location, location, location. Well, for us, location is fabulous. We're eight blocks from a Chedrawi store. We're 11 blocks uh, from the Malacon. I've lost three pounds in three weeks, <laughs> just from all the walking that we've been doing. Yeah. Like we'll be going out this afternoon for some uh, of our one of our favorite hobbies, day drinking, <laughs> and uh, we're going to walk there. And it's about a mile and a half or two miles to where we're walking, but it's a it's a good walk. Where we were, we we would have driven and and parked our vehicle someplace not on the Malacon because sometimes parking down there is a pain. But no, we we chose this location because of its location. Yeah. 
and who knows, a year from now we might stay here, we might... It, it's a crapshoot. Uh, we have paid as low as 14000 for accommodation. We paid 15000 a month last year, and the place that we stayed at for a whole month was 21,000 pesos. Yeah. So... Um, the, the closer you get to the Malacon, or even if it's overlooking the Malacon, you can be paying over 20,000 pesos a month. Um, we have friends that are doing that. So it, it can, it depends on where you are and, and what you really want out of the, the, the place. Okay, one of the things with regards to rent is if you're coming down here for the first time, uh, not just to Mexico, but if you're coming to La Paz and you're looking for a place to rent, by all means say, hey, we're coming down for such and such a period of time and we need X number of bedrooms, we need bathrooms, we need this, that, and the other thing. The one thing everybody that is currently here would greatly appreciate, and especially the locals, is don't tell people what your budget is. You'd be surprised how little you can get through just simple negotiation. But telling people that you can afford $1,500 or $2,000 a month, all that does is it drives the rents up for the people who are already here. and. Somebody getting uh, three or four thousand dollars a month in pension money may be able to afford the fifteen hundred or two thousand dollar a month. The local making a thousand dollars a month can't afford that, and he's living here. Yeah. So, on behalf of the locals and those of us who are staying here, don't tell people what you can afford because that just drives the rents up. Because the landlords will start looking at it and going, oh, okay, you can pay that. Well, now my place is worth that. And might not actually be worth what... It might be a garbage hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Robert and Marianne, for sharing your place here. Let's go ahead and check out one more place. Okay, false alarm. The neighbor just came by. We're going to see one more place before we see the next place. So let's check out her apartment right next door. Okay, so we just were over here. So let's head into the next apartment over. So she said it was also came furnished, even with trinkets. Um, and heading in, she's got a kitchen. Same thing, stove. Do -do -do. A little office space and her bedroom with a queen size bed and then bathroom through here and uh this one this one has a little bit of a um patio that has some plants on it and a shade structure above so next up we are going to visit danielle and steve they live here at uh, residencia salvatierra i've got some other videos from the same place but this is you can see uh a a newer just a couple years old condo building just about three blocks from the malecon so this is definitely the best location of all the folks that we're talking to in this video It's really beautiful when you walk in the front door, you look across uh, out the back window and you're looking at the Bay of La Paz. Um, so the view is just gorgeous. You come in, there's a bedroom to the left. Uh, that's a guest bedroom. On the right, there's a powder room. And then uh, next to that is a utility room. We washer dryer, and a little bit of storage. Then you continue on, we're in the kitchen. So the kitchen is a little snug. <laughs> there is not an actual oven. We have a, a toaster oven that, I, it's amazing what you can cook in a toaster yeah. oven. <laughs> As well, there is a stove top, but you have to wash dishes, of course, uh, by hand. Uh, but otherwise, it, it meets our needs. We have a, a nice big full-size refrigerator, so that's all all good. From there, we have, of course, this dining area and the li living area that looks out over the water. On the left is the master bedroom. And, oh, and both bedrooms have are en suite, so they both have, you know, showered and full bath, you know, full bath except bathtub, of course. 
and in the master bedroom we have a little Juliet balcony with the French doors that open up so it's I can lay in bed and look out over the bay <laughs> from bed it's kind of a nice way to wake up in the morning <laughs> <laughs> so, and then of course, off the living room back here is the balcony. Uh, it's really a great place. It doesn't get sun till late in the afternoon. So once the sun hits, it can get a little hot over here. But up until that point, it's really nice to just sit out here mm -hmm. and drink your coffee or wine and read a book and enjoy the view. So let's dig in with these guys to, you know, cost and how they found the place because they're kind of like have the a somewhat unique story of, of it's kind of like almost a lucky story of like the dream story of how you find a place here and also comparing to some other folks in the building here. We were living in Newburgh, Oregon, and we knew we wanted to spend our retirement years at least part time uh, somewhere warm and with a different culture. So we started looking around uh, at possibilities and ultimately we went and attended an international living convention, which helped us kind of narrow down possibilities, made us think about things we hadn't really considered before. So that's how we ultimately got to uh, considering Mexico as the place to go. Then we started researching. We did, of course, the YouTube research came across country collectors. Initially thought we wanted to go to somewhere in the Yucatan Peninsula, but then they did a video on La Paz and Belandra Beach. And we were like, wow, we can, we don't have to go all the way to the Yucatan to enjoy white sands and turquoise blue waters. That's incredible. And we could actually just drive here and be able to go back and forth, which is really convenient. So we started looking more into La Paz. And I joined every La Paz Facebook group I could find. I found Almost Retired on YouTube. Um, <laughs> Thank and, you. and then I joined all these La Paz expat Facebook groups. One of them was a La Paz Rentals by Owner Facebook group. And I kind of watched that for a while to see what was posting. There was not a huge volume of postings, but I noticed that people who went on to ask, saying we're going to be here at such a time and looking for something, there would be pretty good response. So I finally broke down and did that. I went online or went onto the Facebook group and I suggested I'd like to be here from October till maybe March or April. We still weren't sure of our plans. I did the cardinal sin of mentioning my budget, which <laughs> people will tell you later. You, you shouldn't do that. But we did, and I got a few responses. One of them was the owner of this unit. She just posted a picture of the view and said, um, I'm in your budget. If you're interested, let me know. And so I started communicating with her. Then we talked by phone, and then um, uh, we eventually arranged a month-to-month -month rental contract with it kind of open-ended so that uh, since we didn't know for sure how long we'd want to be here, if we'd even like it at all, to be honest. And so we set up the contract and um, that's how we ended up here. And fell in love with La Paz. And fell in love, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. So I have a video with Jeff and Jan and they, they own a place here and Sean, I have a video with him and he's upstairs and he pays more rent than these guys do. So I wanna hear about kind of like, a little bit more of the story of rents here versus there. How many units does their, their landlord have? What about coming back next year? My landlords, uh, Maya and Susan, they are snowbirders themselves. At the time, they were living in the condo next door. And so they actually have three condos in this building and two that they were running out and of course living here. They have since gone on and to and move. So they're now gonna be running all three of them out. Uh, we came here and it, we have come to learn since we've been here that we are very fortunate and getting an excellent deal um, on this place. We have learned that they're really the, the market can be kind of all over the place. Maybe that's one of the reasons why they suggest not to post budgets on that Facebook group. <laughs> because, you know, we have a friend who lives upstairs. He's been uh, paying like $2,500 a month for a unit that's the same floor plan, but does have a rooftop access. 
he's going to be moving next door next year because you know what happens is people come here maybe they stay airbnb or find something very expensive through a property management company and then once you get here you can take advantage of word of mouth but the word of mouth places they go quickly we have a friend that was wanted to find we just learned of a unit opening up downstairs and we were trying to connect her to that situation and within two days it was already gone it, when you come here you can find better deals than what you may initially pick up but they do go quickly um, i also find that we came really early in the season in october and that also helps because we were we locked into our rental agreement before the bulk of the snowbirds started heading down here. So that I think is also a big help or right now as you're going into the summer season. Um, yeah. Early can, bird gets the place. That's, that's sure. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Sean will be moving um, down. I don't know what he's paying for, of course, next door, but uh, I know it will be significantly less than what he originally booked upstairs. And what about is your rent here? Oh, we pay about $1,100 a month. Which is a screaming deal. It is a that. screaming deal. And there's places, I, I, I've not seen any place for that price in this building. So just a qualifier there. <laughs> so. And, and also we've become really good friends with yeah. land, land ladies, ladies, we call them. Yeah. And, uh, we spend a lot of time when they were next door with them. Uh, going out having drinks and just socializing and yeah. so and they've introduced us to quite a few people in yeah. the Estorito this neighborhood, area, neighborhood yeah so yeah really they were kind of our introduction into La Paz right. so it, yeah. we were really kind of lucky that way yeah we love Someone, them both. people that had have lived here for decades yeah. in some cases so that was a fortunate break so I'm actually recording this in late April I'm not sure when it's coming out for you because I've been just recording frantically because I'm leaving on Tuesday to go north and then I've got all these videos to edit. Uh, these guys are leaving on Monday. So let's talk about their plans to return to Mexico. And because like the ideal thing is that you have a lease that goes year to year that you sign kind of in the summer because that's when there's a lot of availability. So in getting something guaranteed to be available when you return can be tricky. Getting someone to agree to rent to you in the future uh, as steve mentioned we've become really good friends with the land uh, our landladies they are they really want us to be back next year so as i had mentioned we didn't know for sure when we first came here what our long-term plans would be we didn't know if we would really want to stay i'm wishing now i'd plan to stay longer we've acclimated to the heat more than we anticipated and so we could have we could have put this off for another month maybe more but be that as it may, we arranged to, to head out, head north, um, back to the States for the summer months, visit family, uh, go visit old haunts. And because of our situation with our landladies, they, they offered to allow us to basically hold this. They, they will either try to rent it over the summer, maybe Airbnb or something like that for the summer months. But then uh, we have an agreement, we'll come back in September, coming back to redo, renew our temp to permanent visa in September. And so we'll be able to come back here in September. We didn't have to continue to pay rent through the summer, which we're really grateful for. Yeah, because, very lucky. Yeah, that's yeah. not necessarily a normal situation. Right. So as you can see, these guys have really lucked out with found, finding an amazing landladies or finding amazing landladies, not Anne, on just Facebook. And that is a great way to find something remotely. But the best deals are usually found by being here on the ground. So let's find out what is included in their rent. The, uh, the rent include, of course, a furnished apartment. So Pretty much everything, no, now everything you see is was included uh, with the rent. So furnishings for two bedrooms, the kitchen's equipped. It's kind of like Airbnb. Right. The uh, quality Basic. of kitchen things yeah. might not be what you're quite used to back home, but it works. Then in terms of utilities, utilities are included in the rent, except for electricity. We do uh, pay the electricity. But yeah, one thing that was noted, the, the owner does pay for the water bill. La Paz is a desert. Uh, water is an issue. 
we have a cistern for this complex uh, and occasionally it runs out of water and so you know there are days you you suddenly turn on the tap and there's no water now usually within three or four hours they have a water truck out filling up the cistern and we're good to go but it is something to be aware of that you might suddenly want to take a shower and you can't <laughs> <laughs> so these guys are part-timers here in Mexico. They're part-time in the U.S., but don't really have a place to go back to. So let's figure out what their plan is after they leave on Monday. So, we, yes, we leave on Monday. We start heading north. We'll spend some time up in the Phoenix area visiting our son, go take advantage of being there and do the Grand Canyon and Antelope Canyon, that kind of thing. Um, so that'll be a couple weeks. And then we'll head over to California and visit some friends, then on visit some more friends up in Oregon. And then we grew up in Southern Oregon, so we're gonna spend uh, about a month in Glide, Oregon. You'll have to look that one up online because nobody's heard of that. Um, and, and then from there, uh, our plans are still being hammered out, but we'll head north. We lived in the Seattle area for 30 years where Steve actually retired from Boeing and uh, our daughter still lives there. So we'll head up and probably spend the, the rest of summer up in the Seattle area, but we're still kind of hammering that part out. And, but, and they use that from, as a base to, to go maybe visit some other areas, maybe take a trip up to Vancouver, uh, BC or something like that. But, but yeah, we don't have, a home to go back to. We we sold our home. Uh, we had an estate sale. We, you know, I we saved what we wanted, things that were very important to us in a yeah. 10 by 10 storage locker, um, and then everything else. An estate sales company came in and sold it for us, yeah. and then the house. And so yeah, this is <laughs> what we own is in our car. Uh, or in a 10 by 10 locker in Oregon. So it does make these summer months a bit expensive because we're just doing short terms all over the place. Right. And it's not like being able to, you're not paying rent on a long-term basis. It's, it's, it's short-term rent. And so the summer will be a bit spendy because of this. And that kind of leads to us. We have some property in Oregon that we've for years talked about uh, putting a house on. We think uh, we're about ready, I think, to pull the trigger and, and start doing that. And that'll be part of our trip up to, uh, to Glide for uh, a month is figuring out what we want to do, how we want to do it. We'll use that house in the summer months as a home base um, for the summer and so that we aren't paying crazy Airbnb prices all summer long uh, everywhere. And yeah, it'll give us a home base. We love being here in La Paz. The people are so friendly. We're working on our Spanish. It's <laughs> slowly coming along. Um, and of course, everyone's really nice when you just try, uh, you, you work it out, but it does make things a little bit harder. So we've kind of talked yeah. about how it'd be nice to just spend some time back in the States and just kind of decompress a little bit where everything's just easy and how you, you know, completing tasks are the way you're familiar with. So, um, so that'll give us a little downtime when the weather's good. And then we can just come back here in the fall. And <laughs> as soon as the weather turns cold and rainy up north. So, so I think that's our plans at this point. So that does feel like an ideal plan for us. We go we go north a little too soon. It's still going to be raining when we get to, to Oregon and we come south a little too late. So comment down below trying to convince Kat that we should be here for maybe nine months out of the year and three months up there. So give me some, give me some uh, arguments. But thank you for watching this video. You can see from all these different folks different ways that they have found really good deals to live in La Paz, Mexico. So give those things a try. It's possible, and that's what my message is here, is you don't have to wait till you're 65. You can retire early. You guys retired early, it seems, so. Not so early, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a little age difference. <laughs> okay. Um, you can retire early, though, uh, and get on down here and enjoy life. So I've got another tour. Actually, I've got a tour of, if you were to use a rental agency in La Paz, you can check that one out. And some other expats down here just living the dream in Mexico. Hasta luego.